Hello, hello there. Welcome to the show. It is so awesome to have you here. I am so excited, as always, to be back. It's been such a long time, and it's great to be here again. Thank you so much for joining us today for this new show, for this new look, and I hope you are looking forward to it as much as I am. My name is Natalie. I'm coming to you live from Johannesburg, and we here to talk about everything and anything SOC that is straight out of camera. We are here to help you to produce beautiful looking JPEGs straight out of your Fujifilm camera without the fuss of having to edit and do long stuff around your photographs, just merely with the help of Fujifilm simulation recipes. So uh, this is what the show is all about, and we have a bit of a format. If you have not joined us um, for any of the shows last year, we are kicking off with the new season, but the structure will still be the same. We are discussing a one recipe a month that we are looking at more closely and in detail and sharing quite a bit of information about it. We then ask you to use this recipe for a month, and then when you've shot images, you upload them and share them with us, and we show them in the next show, just like we did on the pre-show that we've just come from. In case you haven't uh, watched it, don't worry, we will do the next thing, the same thing next time again. Anyway, let me stop blabbering. I have my master chef of chefs um, waiting on the other side. Uh, we are here with uh, Richie Rush from FujiX Weekly, and he's here to um, join me so we can have an awesome conversation and connect with you uh, to um, help you create beautiful JPEGs. So there he is. Hey, Richie. It's so fancy Hi, meeting Natalie. you here. Um, happy New Year yeah. to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a little late, but a Happy New Year <laughs> to you as well and, and everybody else watching. I appreciate everybody tuning in. <laughs> Well, officially, it's the first time we are talking, so I thought it's only fair that I give you compliments yep. of the new season, however late it is, uh, yep. because we are so much later than we anticipated. Mm -hmm. We um, said goodbye to you all last year and the last show in December, I'm hoping to see you in February, which uh, we just couldn't make it because, you know, we produced a whole new set, a whole new show. Um, we have uh, changed a lot of things. So if there are a few glitches, you know, it's live, so you never know. Please forgive us, be patient with us, and give us feedback on um, what you think of our new look. And yeah. yeah, then we wanted to come in the middle, back uh, to you in the middle of May, and then we had serious power issues. So um, sorry to um, get you all excited and then make you wait. It was a bit stressful yeah. for us as well. But here we are now and ready to kick this off, are we? Yep. So, so excited, and, uh, and you're down there on the computer. And people are watching you from their computers, so they're watching you on a computer on a computer. So <laughs> yeah. <sad. Ooh> <laughs> yeah, so that's really cool. So if you like the computer in yep. computer situation, then um, let us know. <laughs> and yeah, we tried something new. And see, now you are sitting in an no, iPad. I'm on the tablet. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and somebody's watching from their iPad, me on the iPad, and, you know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, let's hope we don't put you into a phone <laughs> and we'll yeah. keep you on the tablet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Could Harold be watching phone, from yeah. Berlin. Hello, thank you so much for tuning in. Who else is with us? Who else is watching? Um, hit us up in the comments. Um, it's wonderful to reconnect with you. We have Enrico here. Enrico, yes, finally, absolutely. <laughs> I feel exactly yeah. the same. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, and thank you for submitting awesome images over and over again. Yes. It's absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, it's fabulous. And here is Robert. He's, Hi, Robert. He, he's here from, I just say he's here from the Netherlands. <laughs> I would not know how to pronounce it, but it's awesome to have you here. It's great to have you back. Um, 
there's lots of um, familiar names. That's awesome. Also, Kendra, mm -hmm. who's um, joined us in some of the episodes last year. That's brilliant. It's so cool to have you guys back. Uh, it's really wonderful. Uh, if, you ha if you are joining in for the first time, please let us know um, so we can give you a round, warm welcome. There is Jonathan mm -hmm. from Jacksonville. Uh, nice and warm there by you, I hope. Yeah, I imagine it, I imagine it is warm there. Still a little chilly here where I am in Salt Lake City, but uh, Jacksonville should be yeah, probably, probably pretty good beach weather, I, I assume. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. I'm really sad because we are going into slowly into winter. It's been a mm. wonderful long summer. But um, yeah, so the cold nights are back soon. Anyway, mm. who else is here with us watching? Um, if you have any questions, please do give us a shout out and we can discuss those um, in the comment section. We are here uh, for you. Warren, you switched over from the pre-show, thank you for joining us there on yep. such a short notice. And um, welcome. Andre is also here. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have yeah, any questions, good, like I, I said, go ahead, Richie. Yeah, I was going to say, I was just going to say uh, for those who didn't catch the pre-show that uh, that's something we're going to be doing uh, in the future and future episodes as well. So if you tune in a little bit earlier, it's a different link, or at least it was this time. I don't know if it'll be every time, but uh, but be sure to tune in if you have 30 extra minutes um, before the show. Tune in, participate. It's an informal discussion. We look at your guys' pictures that you submitted uh, in a slideshow and stuff like that. So definitely uh, try and catch that the next time if you missed it this time. Yes, absolutely. I think we will try to um, do one link, which is easier for all of us, but because we had a bit of a uh, rough start with this one, we are learning as we go. Mm -hmm. So this time we had to split it up into a separate stream. Anyway, be that as it may, there will be lots more of that. And you can ask away in the comments uh, throughout the whole show. Uh, we will have a few extra minutes at, towards the end of the show to uh, take some more of your questions. But at any point, the show is for you. It is for you to ask questions. It's for you to get answers to all the things that you want clarity, you want help with uh, to you know, get you up and running and get you shooting awesome JPEGs. Yeah. And I think we are starting off by looking back. And that is, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just to have a squiz for anyone who has missed some of the episodes or someone um, is tuning in for the first time. We've done a whole season of shows last year. Can you believe it? Yeah. So be sure to watch those if you, if you missed them, you know. Yes, we had, we had uh, lots of good fun. We started mm -hmm. off, um, we've done a total of six episodes so far yeah. and we started off with the first one um which was a really cool um episode number one where we really discussed fuji x weekly in detail and it was an awesome opportunity to get to know richie a little bit better uh, so yeah if you want to find out how it all started and get to know richie a little bit then make sure to watch that episode. Yep. And then uh, in uh, episode two, uh, we started talking about uh, film simulation recipes, Kodachrome 2. Uh, we had some really great uh, questions uh, from the audience that we were able to answer. Uh, so a lot of good information in there. Uh, discussed the importance of, of, of using RAW, even though we're JPEG photographers. That doesn't mean we don't use RAW. And uh, so we talked about that. We talked about white balance shift. Uh, how to remember which recipe was used when you're out shooting and you come back and you're trying to figure out which one you used. Uh, so uh, if any of those, th if you missed that episode and any of those things sound interesting to you, be sure to go back and watch episode two. Yes, exactly. We went right into all the juicy bits there. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, now I have to be the one to talk about episode number three, which was the wonderful episode. If you want to have a laugh, 
<laughs> at Richie and I trying to figure out what flags are what countries, then please watch that show. Mm -hmm. Um, no. I looked back at it and yeah, I had a bit of a giggle and a bit of a like, oh my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> I need to go and um, go back and study a bit of geography, I think. Um, anyway, so, but that wasn't everything. We also uh, chatted about um, how to use the uh, Fuji X Weekly app a little bit in more detail. Um, and if you can't remember all of this right now, don't worry. We have chapter markers in all our um, episodes so you can uh, find your way around a little bit easier and make sure to catch up on all the stuff that you might have missed. And then uh, after that was uh, episode four, uh, we introduced a new uh, couple new segments. Uh, we talked about uh, just some different news items uh, relating to our websites or Fujifilm and that kind of thing. And also uh, recipes for special occasions, which is uh, just simply uh, if if you're in a certain situation, what recipe should you use? And it's just ideas for that. And we made those standalone videos. So you can actually, if you don't want to catch the whole episode, you can watch those segments as, as their own individual videos that are much shorter. Mm. I think that is like a really nice um, spin-off that came uh, mm -hmm. from the show that we have those assets yep. because I think a lot of people ask when we can, you know, when we are um, shooting landscapes or portraits or f other situations uh, that you might have mm -hmm. and then you've got a few extra recipes that you can choose from and you're not stuck and short for ideas. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And in episode number five, um, we talked about some seriously nitty gritty stuff and noise and grain. So if uh, mm -hmm. that is anything that might interest you, then make sure to check out that episode. And uh, and then we finished off season six with the uh, big, huge, long two hour <laughs> special <laughs> that was supposed to be one hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, we talked about color chrome effect, color chrome effect blue. Um, the did. you demoed the the Instax uh, <laughs> mini. Yes, and was that I when did. we had the uh, audio issue? And mm, uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was a fun <laughs> little game we played. So uh, when we, when you do a live event, there's always surprises, you know. And so that was that was one of them. And uh, <laughs> we had a good time. And if, if you have a couple hours to uh, that you're not sure what to do with. You know, you can go and you haven't seen that episode. You weren't there when it was live and you haven't watched it since. Be sure to go back and watch that episode. It's a good time. Yes. Yes, absolutely. All the stuff we did last year. Uh, it was really good mm -hmm. fun. And we are going to do it all over again this year. We are going to, yep. you know, put a bit of a new spin on it. And um, mm -hmm. that is apart from, you know, the new look. Uh, there are some things that we feel we want to do differently or a little bit better or stuff that we learned um, where we could improve on. So let's yep. um, have a bit of a uh, look at to, as to uh, what we have thought of. While we are saying hello mm -hmm. to um, Ari from Mexico, thank you so much for tuning in. Hello. And also Truman is Truman. here with us. It's fabulous to have you. If you're new, please let us know. We want to give you a shout out. Yes, Caroline, you are new. Hi, it's Caroline. your first time here from Israel. It's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Mm -hmm. And thank you for submitting images. It's wonderful to have you with us. Everyone mm -hmm. in the audience, let's give Caroline a warm welcome. And mm -hmm. then we have Doubtful Palace. He's from Oakland. Well, I'm glad you were able to tune in while you could, you know, so that's, that's really good. You have to <laughs> yes. catch the rest of it later. Yes, absolutely. Fabulous. Um, should we look at what we're doing in season two? Yeah, let's don't drive right in. Let's, Jason, let's come this. with us. Let's have a look uh, what we are getting up to this season. Uh, so uh, we're starting off with... Um, the fact that we started with a pre-show, uh, we mm -hmm. will um, do that on a more a better organized basis next time. Uh, we've got some changes to how you submit your images and um, we want you to be our live guest. 
<laughs> so first, um, let's explain to you a little bit more about our pre-show. So we um, go live half an hour before the start of the real show to have a bit of a casual chat to you. You can mm -hmm. come and ask us questions and we just chat away on all sorts of things that we don't cover or haven't yet covered in the main show. And also, you know, you can give us ideas as to what we could discuss in the main show. Yeah. Um, and so and like, uh, for example, in this pre-show, we talked about uh, ProMist and Cinebloom filters. And uh, we had a little, you know, little quiz. We played a game and it, it was just a really good time. Yes, exactly. So that's really cool. If that's something for you, make sure to tune in earlier. And then uh, uh, another change is that uh, we've had so many submissions of pictures, um, which has been absolutely wonderful. Uh, we want to be able to showcase them all, but it just makes the show so long. So what we're doing is we're showing all of the pictures before the show and the pre-show and also after the show. So if you if you didn't catch the pre-show, you can wait till after the show, watch it then, and then we'll, we'll try and get that standalone video of those um, that slideshow out like right away. So uh, you'll have a chance to see all of the images at that point. We're gonna just show some of the pictures in the show itself. And so that's that's one of the big changes and hopefully that'll help uh, not only be, allow us to be able to show more of your pictures, but also reel in the time of the show just a little bit. So it's not two hours like, you know, the end of last season. Okay, so I hope it's only me who's not hearing Richie at the moment. Um, the audio has gone a little bit funky again, but um, if you heard him, then everything's fine. Um, I'm going to carry on talking to you about the new recipe of the month. So uh, what we've changed is that the show uh, that we are introducing the new recipe, we want to really focus on the recipe so that when we send you off to give yourself uh, a month to shoot with the recipe, uh, that you have all the information that you need to create beautiful images. So we, uh, this show really uh, should have been called uh, Trix 400, but because we are still needing to catch up with the system that we had last year, um, this episode is called Kodak Gold 200 and Trix 400, but from the next episode, the uh, recipe that we're introducing in the show will be the name of the show. But you will then be submitting those images in the next show. We will go over this a couple of times during the show today, so I'm sure you will be clear on what's going on by the time we're done here. But this is not everything. We still have more news. Uh, and if uh, I'm having audio trouble, if you guys in the audience uh, can let us know if it's cutting out or if you just if you hear me fine, um, that way we can know how it sounds to you guys. So if you yeah. don't mind uh, giving us a comment on that. Um, and uh, we want you to be our live guest. I know that sounds like a very scary thing, but uh, this the show is really about you more than it is about us. So we want to have your ideas, your discussions. We actually have a live guest on the show today. It's a little bit of a surprise. So, um, yeah, yay. <laughs> I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about it. But we want you guys to be, uh, you know, not just active in the show and submitting pictures and comments, which is really great. We're glad that you're doing that. But we also want to get you on the show. So, um, you know, we'll, it, it sounds scary. We'll make it not scary. We'll walk you through it. So don't don't be afraid. But let us know if you're interested in that. Yes, please give us a shout out if you do, because we would love to connect with you. We would love to hear your experiences that you have with shooting um, straight out of camera with the recipes and just how you how you enjoy that. And something everyone's got a story to tell. So we would love to hear yours. Okay. But I think that's it as far as changes are concerned. So now let's get into the swing of things. We have some awesome news to share. Uh, I believe it's some news that um, have kept Richie rather busy over the last mm -hmm. while. Um, he is a man who never really sleeps anyway, as far as I'm concerned, I think. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, he s now strikes again because um, if we have a drum roll, let's play the drum roll, please. We have a new app. Yay! Yay! Yeah, this is the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, Richie Cam camera app for the iPhone. It's something I've been working on uh, with uh, the app developer that I worked with for the Fuji X Weekly app and the Rico Recipes app. Uh, Sahan is his name, and uh, we, we've been working on this behind the scenes, very secretly, very quietly, for almost a year. And um, I am just so pleased with how it's turned out. It's still a work in progress. There's going to be a lot of improvements coming in the next you know, weeks, months, and years. But uh, now you can um, not only take pictures with your Fujifilm camera and have film simulation recipes, but you can use your iPhone and have filters that I've uh, crafted uh, to get, um, you know, kind of an analog look from your, from your iPhone. And where it all kind of began is that I was using a one-step process. We've talked about this before in the, in the past episodes, the one-step process being that you, you capture the picture. The second step that a lot of people do is they, you know, then develop the picture in the, in the film days, it was in the dark room in the digital age, it's with, you know, Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever software you use, but, you know, using film simulation recipes is a one step process. You don't have to edit your pictures afterwards. It saves you time. Polaroid or Instax is kind of the same thing where you take the picture and then you have a finished picture and you don't have to edit it. And when I was using my, you know, cell phone to take pictures, I was then taking the picture and then editing it in different various apps and stuff. And it was a two-step process. And so I decided to make an app where it was a one-step process similar to using your Fujifilm camera. And um, it's so genius. this is the website. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I, I, hope, I hope it's useful. It's useful to me. I've had a lot of fun using it. And I hope that it's useful to, to you guys out there in the audience that that you find it a good tool for when you do need to use your iPhone because as uh, Chase Jarvis coined, the best camera is the one that's with you. So if you have your cell phone with you and you don't have your Fujifilm camera, you don't want to actually miss the opportunity. So I wanted, to, I wanted the app to be very, very easy, very streamlined and uh, to where you just take the picture. You know, basically it comes loaded with a filter already, no need to edit. Uh, very intuitive controls um so that basically the idea was that it wasn't just for photographers that um like kids could use it or 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 grandma could use it or, or whoever you know anybody could could use it and not feel like it's overwhelming or confusing or anything like that and you would still get uh good pictures there are um, 17 filters on it right now more will be added at some point in the future um, three, the, the app is free. It's free to download. It's free to use, uh, no ads, no data collection. Um, so you don't have to worry about your privacy, not being private and, but you get three filters for free. And then if you subscribe, then it unlocks the rest of them. And it also unlocks the ability to favorite, uh, your, your filter. So that makes the process a little faster and easier for you. Yes, so it's really all about making it easy and straightforward and a good mm -hmm. way to get you to create beautiful photographs, even without a real camera. Uh, yep. I and have I, uh, used it quite a bit. Um, I also like, I, I love some of the results that, that I've been getting. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really, really nice and neat idea. So you should definitely give it a try and see if you like it. We have um, a little short video clip here that uh, one, of, uh, the, um, one of the fans, I can say, from uh, Richie um, has made and sent to him. So we're going to have a look so that you can see live what it would be like to use the app.
So that's um, yeah. really cute. Uh, it gives you a nice idea uh, what it is like to shoot pictures in a vintage Kodak um, is what um, this person used. And it's, yeah, simple, straightforward, and it's really nice to use. We can then um, also show you uh, live here um, how you take pictures. Yay. Just, <laughs> yay, just so that we yeah. can give you another, um, another look as to what it is like when it's on your phone. So whenever yeah. we're ready, we can switch over. There we go. You are now looking at my phone. And we even have a different kind of a view. So this is for my crew in the background. Um, if you give us um, the look so that we can see my phone inside the phone, uh, that would look even nicer. So while they're getting ready, I'm going to show you... Um, how to launch this app. So you're now looking at my screen and you see at the bottom right here, I have the Richie Cam app uh, ready and waiting right next to the Fuji X Weekly app. <laughs> and um, I am going to open it here and going to take a picture. I have um, faded film as one of my um, favorites. And yeah, so you open the app, it immediately opens the camera, and you can then choose what kind of a look you want. Like Richie said, there is plenty of different ones to choose from, and they also um, come with a little bit of an explanation and some sample images. So if you're not quite sure what it's all about, you can check um, that I symbol on the side there, and then it gives you some sample images which is also really useful. And all you then need to do is take the picture. You have control over your flash, and you can um, favorite the film, and also do a little bit of an adjustment on the filter. So if you don't want quite as much, you can adjust that here. And adjust the exposure up and down, and then you take the picture. And that's really it. And then when you've taken yeah, the pictures, you can print them out on Instax prints, and then you have an even nicer photograph. Yep. And that's a fun way to use it if you have an Instax printer, is you can uh, take the pictures on your Richie Cam app uh, uh, and then print them as, as Instax. Is that what you have there? Is that Are those yes. uh, Instax pictures taken with Richie Cam? They are, they are indeed. Oh wow! So that we was have, nice. so we have, we're doing a lot of inside of inside. So this is a Richie Cam photo of Richie Cam photos inside an <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's funny. So, yeah. yeah. It, so, so if you favorited a filter like you did there with the uh, faded film, when whatever the favorited one that's first in the list and you can organize them however you want whatever order you want you add as many as you want or as few and then organize them in whatever order but whatever one is first when you open the camera app that's the one that it'll be automatically loaded to so you can have your your favoritest favorite your most favorite <laughs> favorite you can have that be the one that it opens up to when you open the app okay that's very useful that's very nice Awesome. Well, thank you, Richie. This is a really nice addition uh, to mm -hmm. my app collection. And I have yeah, enjoyed using it. The results, I think, look really great. So I invite you to try it out. And, and if any of you, you in the audience, yeah, if any of you in the audience have this app on your phone and you're using it, you know, let us know what you think of it. Let me know. I would love to get your feedback. And uh, um, yeah, that's... Uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I hope that you find it a useful to tool for you and that it's helpful for your photography. Yes. So that would be great. Fabulous. And I think this is what we have as far as news are concerned, but we um, have lots more to talk about. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's uh, dive into a bit of a tip. So we always have some um, information for you 
to make life a little bit easier, to help you along in shooting uh, JPEG straight out of camera. And um, we did this last year, but I want to run through this again because it is a really good way to give you a foundation uh, to start correctly, especially if you are new, which I believe there are quite a few of you um, that are tuning in for the first time. So um, what I would like to do is run through how you actually load a recipe into your camera. Okay. And I'm going to ask Richie to help me with that. So I've got my camera okay. here and um, you will just now you'll be able to see onto the back of it. And I want to load the Kodak Gold 200 recipe onto my X-T3. I've got an X-T3 here and, um, we'll, and uh, Richie will guide me through this. Um, you're seeing a funny picture okay. here at the moment just because I want to start off correctly uh, by um, I'm going to take this first step and then I'll hand over to Richie. Uh, what you're going to start off with is you're pressing the Q menu um, on the back of mm -hmm. your camera for the first time. And then you get into this dialog box and now it's over to you, Richie. If you can talk me through how to yep. uh, do this quickly. Okay, so once you press the press and let go of the Q button, it brings up the, the Q menu. And then if you press and hold it, it'll bring up the edit, save, custom menu setting. And that's the easiest way to get into it. And uh, um, once you got that in there, you choose which uh, position you want to put the, um, the uh, new recipe. And uh, I brought it up uh, here on my, uh, uh, the Excellent. Fuji X Weekly app on my uh, iPhone. So um, that's where you could find, if you don't have the app, make sure you go and download the uh, Fuji X Weekly app. Uh, the Kodak Gold 200 recipe is what we're putting in. So you want to arrow to the right or, or press OK, and that will bring you to this uh, setting here. And uh, we're going to put in the uh, parameters. So dynamic range is auto. So you're going to hit uh, OK or arrow to the right, and that will allow you to change that to auto. Press OK, and uh, we're going to go to Film Simulation Recipe, or Film Simulation, that's Classic Chrome. It's already there, so you yes. don't have to change that one. But from there, you can choose all of the different film simulations. And then Grain is Strong. And this is a X-T3 you're doing this on, I believe, right? Yes. That's, that's what Correct. it is. Every camera is a little bit different in how it's set up, uh, depending on the generation you have, but it, they're, they're pretty similar. So, so if yours is a little different, it's because they Fujifilm has changed it over time a little bit, evolved it a little bit. But um, see, color chrome effect is off. White balance is daylight. Yep. And uh, press OK. In the uh, newer cameras, you can change. You can actually set the shift from there, the camera X Pro 3 and newer, but you can't do that in the cameras that are older than that, which this is. So we'll get to that in a minute, how you change the white balance shift. But highlight is set to minus two. Shadow is the plus one. Color is the plus three. Uh, sharpness is set to minus two. And noise reduction, the minus four. You can edit the custom name if you want. You can change the name to Kodak Gold 200 or or just Gold 200 or, or whatever makes the most sense to you. I usually like to write the full name, but just for time's sake, I'm shortening it. You hit set. Um, not back. A lot of times people hit back and then you, you go back to the top, which you can just scroll down a couple and it'll take you to the top. Um, or you can scroll to the top that way and you save current settings or no, no, you hit back. 
That's right. You don't hit save current settings. Don't hit save current settings. That's whatever <laughs> you have programmed in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So hit the back button and it'll, it'll, it'll say, okay. And there it is. And there it is. And then uh, to, in order to set the white balance shift, you actually have to go to the white balance menu within uh, the IQ, which is right there. Um, and then um, you go down to, to daylight. That's what you'd want to do. Um, but anyways, it's set to plus four red minus five blue. Yeah, you, you did it for auto, but you would want to do I'm it so for, sorry. for daylight. No, it's all right. There we go. Oh, and there you then go. I need to do so it again. Had, yeah, and then if you, whatever you had set in there for auto white balance probably just got messed up. Yes, it's fine. So um, don't forget about that later. Plus four red <laughs> yes. and minus five blue. Minus five. Thank you. And plus four red. There you go. And there we go. And then and the recipe go. is oh, to set. And then you and that's can, how you do it. And then you can find it again in the Q menu mm -hmm. where you then find it here. And then you're yep. ready to get shooting. Yep. So if you didn't already have Kodak Gold 200 in your, in your camera, you can now um, grab your camera and set that up. Yes. Exactly. Add that to your C1 through C7 presets. Yes, perfect. So every time you load a recipe, you'll go about it this way. And yeah, you have at least yep. seven different uh, films or cameras available to you at any one time. Mm -hmm. Cool. With a few exceptions. The XS10, I think there's only, or, or, yeah, the XS10 has four, I think. And then the, the like the bare ones have like just the one yes but other than that most cameras have c1 through c7 yes and you have the app with you so you can mm -hmm. change them as you go along so no fear yep. there we've got you covered um should yep. we head on over to the next section and uh look a little bit at um this oh we've got a comment we've got a comment from anders he said yes. i'll have to try yep. out the new app yes the yeah. Richie Cam is um, yours for the taking. Go download it now and try it out. Uh oh. Yep. <laughs> right now it's only on uh, Apple. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, sorry, Enrico, you'll just have to switch over to an iPhone for now. <laughs> <laughs> And it's something made for Rebecca. Absolutely. Go yep. try it out and yep. take some holiday pictures with the Richie Cam. <laughs> nice. Thank you. And hello, Isabel. Thank you for tuning in. It's great to have you with us. Super stuff. Thank you, everyone, for watching and tuning in today. It's absolutely wonderful to mm -hmm. be back. Um, it's been a long time coming. Yes. Uh, yes, you can use the Kodak Gold 200 on the X100V, but you'll have to decide what you want the grain size to be because that's um, the older cameras that it was designed for. I say older, but they're not that old. Um, they they don't have grain size. They just have grain strength. But the, the newer ones have grain size and strength. So if you choose like um, like a small grain size, that would probably be a good good one to choose. And then you can use it on your X100V. Yes. Ooh, Caroline is asking if we can use the recipes as presets in Lightroom. Um, no, it's even better than that. You don't even need Lightroom anymore. You have everything you need inside your camera. And then you have yep. the finished image. You don't need to do any more editing. So much easier mm -hmm. than presets. Yeah, and if I you think. program the, the the recipe in and you shoot raw, and then you pr and then you pull that raw file into Lightroom, it'll apply some of the settings, but it won't apply all of them. Yeah. So or you can use XRAW Studio as okay. as an alternative. 
Hello, this is. I'm so glad that you are finally here as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and for joining us this evening. It's great to have you here. Well, this evening for me. I try to say mm -hmm. today all the time <laughs> because it's a well, different it, time. Know, people are, yeah, people are tuning in all over the world. So some people it's morning, some people it's late evening, some people it's night. You know, it's amazing that this is so worldwide. Yeah. Yes, it's absolutely wonderful uh, to be speaking to everyone from all over the place. And let's head on over to our recipes for special occasions. Um, I really am liking this uh, part of the show a lot because I think it adds a lot of value uh, to people if you are stuck in a certain scenario and you're looking for different recipes. And we felt that artificial light was a really good one for this uh, particular episode because uh, you've been shooting with Kodak Gold 200 for a heck of a long time. And that is a daylight mm -hmm. balanced a film and uh, recipe. And what you might have um, come across a couple of times is that when you're shooting in uh, tungsten light and artificial light, that your images are um, a little bit off. They are very yellow. Some people like it a lot. Sometimes it works in other situations that might not be so great. Um, if this is, um, sounds true for you and you would like to find an alternative, um, here are some really good examples uh, what you can use instead uh, to get you great looking results in artificial light. Yeah, and there's many different recipes that you could use, not just these three, but we wanted to highlight these three as um, ones to suggest to you to possibly try. And for they're for different um, uh, camera generations. We have pretty much most uh, cameras covered here. Uh, the first one is uh, Ektachrome uh, 320T. And uh, it's for if you have a XT4, um, XS10, XE4, or XT32 camera is what those that recipe is compatible with those. So if you have the, the newest cameras, that's a good one to try. If you have a camera that's that's older than that, um, Xtrans 3, uh, XT3, XT30, or, or you can even use it on the X100V or uh, or X Pro 3. If you choose, you got to choose the grain size, but uh, but uh, the Fuji Color NPL 160T is a good uh, recipe for that. If you have uh, X Trans One, um, that's what the Kodachrome One is is for there. But you can try it on the uh, X Trans Two, and it'll still work. Or if you have a you know bare model or something like that. So uh, if you have um, you know any one of those models, which is pretty much the whole lineup, there's a recipe here that is compatible with your camera. And these recipes will do good in artificial light situations. Yes, so we've got you covered no matter what camera you shoot, so you won't be stuck anymore for uh, finding an alternative recipe. What I would suggest is that you write yourself a note in the app, um, in the notes section, mm -hmm. so that you um, have a good reference. You can star it and then write artificial light in there so that you know this is one of the ones that you can choose if you're stuck and you're not sure um, which yep. recipe to use in a certain environment that you're in. Fabulous. Yep. Thank and you so yeah, much, Richie. If you're a subscriber, yeah, and if I was going to say if you're a subscriber on the app, you can even use the different colored stars. You can make, uh, you know, maybe a red or something, that color star as your recipes for artificial light. You can choose one of the colors and organize it in that fashion. Yes, that's a great tip as well. Um, I love the addition to um, the app with all the different colored stars. That definitely helps a lot. It's, it's super cool. And then it's time for us to have a look at Kodak Gold 200. Oh. We have been waiting for this uh, for the longest time. I'm sure you've had mm -hmm. a lot of um, experience uh, shooting with this recipe. I, I must say, I think it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, and I, it's grown on me so much. Um, I didn't think that I would, I mean, I knew I was going to enjoy it, but I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I actually did. And I have a really nice collection of beautiful looking JPEGs straight out of 
camera. And um, to give you a bit of an overview, um, we have an insert here uh, from Tim Riddick, who was very kind uh, to let us use um, this video clip of what he had to say about Codacol 200. Are you going to the beach this summer? Well, then pop some Kodak Gold. Are you going camping? Well, pop some Kodak Gold in your camera. Are you just going out, hanging out with friends at a park or hanging out downtown? Then pop some Kodak Gold in your camera and you'll have some fantastic memories to print. Now, the first reason why I feel like you should still be shooting with this film today is that it is insanely difficult to ruin a shot if you're shooting it in good light. The second reason you should be shooting this film stock is because of the look and feel. Kodak Gold gives warm results, are bright, and it can be contrasty depending upon how you have your film scanned. I felt that each image had just the perfect amount of sharpness to it. The last and third reason to run out and grab a few rolls of Kodak Gold 200 is that it has the perfect vintage feel to it. I know that you know that I know that you probably have some apps on your phone that you have used at some point in time to give your digital images from your phone that perfect 80s and 90s feel to it. Overall, Kodak Gold is a well-balanced film that will please just about everyone from any crowd. I am making these videos to encourage you to go out and to create, to pick up something new, to go out and shoot with it. Go out and create what moves you. At the end of the day, none of this really matters. It's only what matters with what you create. That is all that I really have for you today, guys. Mahalo, my friends, and I cannot wait to see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button to help little Timmy hit a thousand subs before the end of the year. Thank you so very much, Tim, for this awesome tip. Uh, please, everyone, uh, show Tim some love. Hit the subscribe button when you hit over to his channel. The video itself is a little bit longer, so there's a lot more information in there. This was just an overview, and we felt that it's a really nice introduction to and a summary of what uh, Kodak Gold um, can offer you. He's obviously talking about the, the actual film stock, which we are not talking about, but we have uh, the opportunity. Uh, we are so lucky that we can shoot as if we are shooting film, yet um, we are shooting it with the recipe. So, yep. um, yeah, so I think we want to have a look quickly at some sample images. Uh, Richie, don't you want to um, start with one of your images just to point out a few things to the viewers who may have not shot all that much with the film, what to expect when they're shooting with Kodak Gold 200? Yeah, so you know, a lot of the things that he said about the film also applies to the film simulation recipe because it is mimicked after the film. And it's not 100% exactly the same, but it's uh, a lot of it still applies. And what we have here is using it at sunset, uh, getting that very warm last red light that is on this mountain. And the, the film simulation recipe did a fantastic job of really making that pop without over popping. You know, there's there's some that would do too much. This seems to balance it really well. So that's that's what I wanted to point out with this particular picture. Yes, it's absolutely beautiful. I love this red mountain. It's absolutely stunning. Mm. I have chosen this image to um, share with you because when I shot it and, and looked at it in my camera, um, I really was reminded of a print that I, I would have expected to hold a print in my hands that came from a film camera. Um, this is obviously not the Ritchie cam, but I was shooting it with the Fujifilm <laughs> camera, so apologies for the wrong link here in the bottom of the screen. Um, yeah, and I, I, I thought it was a scene out of the 80s, so I really, really liked that a lot. Yeah, and so this is an example of using, instead of on a sunny day like what you did, this was a very overcast day, and uh, it still did really, really well um, to uh, render the picture very nicely in a different kind of lighting.
you know, because a lot of times we use these on, you know, these recipes. It's got daylight balance where the sun is out, it's summertime, and, and you know, there's a lot of blue sky. But, uh, but even when it's gray, it still does pretty well. Yes, it's a, a really nice, it's a nice contrast to the previous image just to see um, how it performs in that kind of light. I, I do love the mood in this as well. And the grain is just beautiful. And this is the way that I started the new year. And I really love the, the feel, the summery, bright colors. And I really enjoyed the look that I was getting from it. So the, especially the greens um, in this recipe really pop up, very contrasty. So it's a very nice recipe to use for that. But a lot more important than our images are what mm -hmm. you created with them. Mm -hmm. Like we've mentioned a couple of times already um, in the show is we have um, showed a slideshow of all the images that were submitted. So um, whereas previously uh, we chose one of the images that were submitted, because some of you are very eager beavers and share more than one image, which is really cool. And mm -hmm. we made, um, they all made it into the slideshow and we showed that in our pre-show and we will show the slideshow again at the end of the show. So if you haven't caught it yet, stick around until after the show so that you can see all the images that were shot and submitted on this awesome Coda Gold 200. We have chosen a few because there are just so many that we can't look at all of them uh, throughout the show. So here are just a few that stood out to us that we wanted to share with you directly. So over to you, Richie. Here's your, your first select. Yeah, so Sebastian uh, sent us this picture of uh, a harp, I believe is what it is, but it's a great still life with just beautiful lighting um it, it looks like natural indoor lighting and the recipe did a great job of, of just capturing the feel of it and the tones um, of that warm wood that that's in there and it, it just this image just stood out to me in, in that way and i appreciate uh, sebastian sending us that to uh use in the show and the share with all of you because it's a it's a really nice image and um just love yeah. the, the way the recipe renders it in that lighting Yes, yeah, absolutely beautiful. I love the tones um, and the reflections um, in particular. So very well done to you. And here is an image that I chose uh, from Caroline, who is watching with us for the first time. So I'm super chuffed how this all comes together. A uh, great shout out to you, Caroline. I love this photograph a lot. I love how um, all the colors are rendered and that really jumped out at me. And I like the way you roll. <laughs> so that's super. I wanted to share that. Thank you for submitting this image. Um, very well done. Thank you. And uh, Enrico sent us this one um, that is, I love the abstract nature of this. It's a uh, reflection in a, in a pool uh, or, or water of some sort. And then flipped up, it's upside down, right? But we see it right side up in the reflection and it's it's just uh yeah it's, it's painterly it's got like a it looks like uh it could be on a, a wall in an art museum or something it's it's really cool i like the uh the uh the painterly quality to it yes yeah it's very very nice and and different um and very nice also is the scene that i thought um nate captured here for us i love the different colors in it, the tones, uh, and, and the whole scene, the way the, this path weaves through the, the image here. Uh, very well captured, uh, very nice composition, and just a really cool feel to it. Yeah, and it takes you through the image to that surprise, you know, building in the background. Mm. Um, and then uh, Munis, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, sent us this picture of uh, it looks like somebody cooking in an outdoor uh, situation and you have the smoke um, giving atmosphere and being lit by the sun and it's very it's very moody and and with so much atmosphere in, to, in it I, I just, it really stood out to me in, in that way and it, you can almost step into that scene you can almost be there and smell the food and and the smoke and and, and feel the warmth of the sun and stuff it's 
It's really neat. Yeah, and this golden quality to it, uh, which mm -hmm. I think um, really gives it um, the reason why we wanted to share that with you. And I think then yeah. there is one more image that we have um, that we've selected, and that is um, shot by Walker. And I just love the blues. I always love the blues. I think with a lot of these recipes, how how the color comes through and the grain is rendered in the in the sky, I really enjoy it. And it makes me feel like fishing, although I really do not fish at all. <laughs> but this is very inviting. I think it's a very cool scene and really shows off how wonderful um, the recipe can capture scenes like this. Mm -hmm. But there is one more. One more. One more indeed. Um, an image which we think, you know, just stood out for the both of us. Uh, Richie, do you want to share what you, what you like the most about this? Oh, this, this image is just so perfect. I mean, it's uh, uh, the colors, the, the, the silhouette, the sun. Uh, you know, the sun is really hard to capture without it getting all looking weird. Um, and, and, uh, but it, in this picture, it's just um, really good. I like the, um, how it goes a little bit light to a little bit dark with those red tones in the background. Um, and then the, the wonderful silhouette like this is this is the picture that you you hope to capture at least once in your life something like as good as this you know so um just bravo for this wonderful picture and uh thank you so much for sharing it with us you know yes absolutely um congratulations Bjorn on capturing this beautiful photograph um I know he can't be watching tonight uh but I hope when you're watching Bjorn um that you catch this. And this is what you can expect uh, from Kodak Gold 200. Um, please note though, this is not any kind of crit that we're giving here. It's merely to select a few images that we want to share that we have received and that um, caught our eyes because we just merely cannot share every single image during the show, unless you want to sit through a three-hour episode, maybe. <laughs> um, so we have to we have to choose a few a selection, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't mean that the others that were submitted weren't as fabulous. So thanks to everyone for submitting um, your wonderful photographs, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and for rounding off um, Kodak Gold with us. Um, I wanted to no. mention one last thing, one last thing before we move on to the next recipe. And that is, um, I don't know if you've heard in the news, but I think, Richie, we are like on the pulse, like, like seriously on the pulse for this recipe because Kodak released um, the Kodak Gold 200 for 120 film, re-released them on Monday. So this is clearly yeah. a very popular recipe that is still around today. And you can still shoot it in 35 millimeters and now also again in 120. So I, I like to think that they did that because of uh, our December <laughs> show. <you know>. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that is the reason yeah, why yeah. we prolonged the actual show to make sure that we come and can tell you about the re release on Monday. So, yeah, we're just, <laughs> we're just awesome like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's oh, funny. fabulous. Um, yeah, but I think it's time to move on. And we are moving on to some super exciting black and white. Mm -hmm. We are diving into the world of black and white, finally. We've been holding back um, last year because we wanted mm -hmm. to just get you shooting in a couple of other Fuji colors and different color recipes before um, we open up the wonderful world of black and white photography. And then uh, we are kicking it off with a bang, I think. What do you say, yeah. Richie? Well, this is my personal favorite recipe. When people ask me what what I like to shoot with, um, this is it. If I, if I could only shoot with one for the rest of my life, um, it would be the Kodak Trax 400 recipe. And I just love it so much. And so I'm just really glad that we chose this one 
Uh, Natalie actually chose it um, for this uh, to kick off season two. Uh, super excited about it. I love using it. And so I just want to uh, show it. We're going to show you some of our pictures and then we're, we'll move on to some other great things we have in store regarding Triax 400. Um, uh, this picture here uh, is the, the recipe does really well for a lot of different situations. But where I think it, it really does well is like just documentary photography, just uh, just whatever's around. And so here we have a Christmas tree with a cowboy hat on it and some old books on a bookshelf. Uh, just a scene you would pass by a thousand times and never think to even give a second look to. But I found it to be uh, have interesting light and an interesting story. So I uh, snapped this photo using the Triax 400 recipe. Yes, it's a, it's a wonderful introduction uh, to Trix 400. Um, there is no wonder that it's so popular. The the film also itself is still, I think, it's one of the most popular black and white films, has been and still is uh, to date. So I'm also super yeah. excited uh, to be able to shoot in this in this mood and this recipe, and it just ugh. Yeah, this was my very first picture, actually, that I shot in the recipe, and I, I snapped it. There's absolutely nothing special about this scene at all, but the tones just had me straight away, and I absolutely love it. The, yeah, just the, the, the whole mood of this kind of black and white is just wonderful, and it's amazing that you just take the picture, and it's there. You don't need to do anything else to it. So that really still gets me uh, very excited. Yeah, because if you're using the film, you'd have to take it into the dark room and, and all that stuff, develop it, print it. Uh, you know, there's a whole process to it. And, I, and I've done that before a long time ago. Um, but um, I, I'm like, this is much easier. <laughs> yes. Uh, this picture here, um, it's a, the location's interesting. It's in Montana and it's on an an island that's a state park and there's wild some wild horses uh on the island but you have to go out there to buy boat to get to it and there's uh, you know a few little abandoned um buildings little shanties and stuff and so that's what this is on a, a gray cloudy day um and uh just love how the the, the triax recipe mm. the tones of it the, the the blacks in it and stuff look and uh um how it renders the picture and stuff so that's why that's why I chose this picture to to be in here. Yes, it, I think it's absolutely fabulous, and the clouds and the sky with this beautiful grain is just absolutely wonderful. And similarly, um, this image of mine that I wanted to sh share with you, I also think, um, in particular, I think actually the the grain in the image. I mean, it's something that uh, Fujifilm is renowned for anyway, and this recipe just really highlights it and. Um, yeah, the, the latitude of the film and therefore the recipe is really lovely. And I, yeah, I think it's just, it's so nice. It just doesn't, doesn't get old. It really doesn't. Yep. And, uh, this is my, uh, son, Jonathan, uh, he's, uh, loves to fish and he's, uh, fishing in this lake and, uh, just silhouetted against the, uh, the, the sky, the, the overcast sky and stuff, the early morning light. And it, it, it's so moody, you know, it, you get uh, using this uh, recipe in like a high contrast situation. You can get these really moody pictures. Yeah, that's an absolute classic. That's wonderful. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing that with us. I'd love it. The silhouette, obviously, and then also the ripples on the water is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, there's more ripples on water. And uh, one of the pictures that I captured, and I just love the, the texture and the light on the, on the grasses in the foreground. Um, it just, yeah, really caught my eye. So I really enjoyed that. So you, I'm sure, will have lots and lots of fun with this recipe. Make sure to no. dial it into your camera and to you know have it handy and start shooting with it. Um, can we finally spill yeah. the beans? Finally. Well, I, I, I wanted to say a couple of things uh, before we do that, if that's all right. Okay, but of course, absolutely. 
Yeah, so what I wanted to say is um, if you go on the website and you look at the recipe, it's under Xtrans 4. Uh, you can also find it in the app. But um, there are, uh, if you read the instructions, there's versions of it that you can use it on the newest cameras. Uh, you can use it on like the X-T3 and X-T30. You can use it on X-Trans 3. Uh, there's, there's, there's small modifications that allow it to be usable on, on you know, a wide range of cameras. So you, it, this recipe is good for a lot of people out there. If you have X-Trans 1, X-Trans 2, or a Bayer camera, I'm sorry that this one is not compatible with your camera. But otherwise, uh, the majority of you out there should be able to use this recipe. So, um, you know, find uh, the modifications that you need. Uh, like I said, they're, they're stated in the, in the article on the website, or you can find them in the app. Um, and, uh, and, the, and so uh, that's a great thing about this recipe is that it is, can be used on such a wide variety of cameras. Yeah, this is, I think, why well, I'm so very excited about um, shooting with this recipe as well. It just ticks so many boxes uh, for um, using it in the show because we obviously want mm -hmm. as many of you as possible to participate in the months of shooting and to experiment and experience the recipe. So we are trying to uh, find recipes that the majority of you can use and yeah, this yep. is this is the one. This is just yeah, absolutely phenomenal. I'm super excited, yep. and even more excited um, about what's to come. Am I allowed to say it now? Yes, say it now. <laughs> okay, we have our special guest here, and it is none other than the photographer by the name of Anders, and he um, will join us now. And he is the he is. actual um, creator of the mm. Kodak Trix 400 recipe. Anders, hello, hello. Thank you Hi. so much for joining us. It's, it's great fun to be here. It's an <laughs> honor to be on the show. It is yeah, we're so honored to have you. Yes, it's an absolute honor um, to have you. It's wonderful um, that we can be here all three of us um, chatting mm -hmm. um, about this beautiful recipe that you've created for us. And um, I would love to shoot off uh, with the very first question, and that is, how come you ended up creating a recipe? I mean, you know, how, how, how does one get there? How did you get there? Well, uh, it's kind of a long story, really, but... Uh I'll try to make it shorter. Uh, I uh, grew up shoot, shooting film. I actually started way back in 1979 when, when I was six years old. Uh, and uh, when I was in school, uh, I, I learned how to develop film and uh, the school provided Tri-X for free. So <laughs> I wow. got hooked on it immediately. Uh, and uh, also, uh, uh, I r read a, a lot of uh, National Geographics uh, and uh, other documentary magazines. So I kind of picked up on, on that whole uh, uh, photojournalistic vibe. And uh, Triax has always been a, a huge part of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, when uh, I finally switched to uh, Fujifilm, the main reason was uh, uh, the possibility to uh, get uh, uh, finished images straight out of the camera. Uh, uh, and uh, I've been shooting tons of Tri-X in my years. <laughs> I've always missed it since I switched to digital. But uh, uh, the creation part was uh, a mess. It took me over a year to get it right. Wow. And so uh, there were tons uh, of different versions. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have some Im images that's coming up in, in a bit. So we have uh, one of the final prototypes. It's mm -hmm. very close, but... Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, wow. and you did a fantastic job creating it. Oh, thank you. 
I'm, I'm very pleased with myself. Yeah, oh, so that's the first image. Yes. So if I can just so um, fill the audience in there, uh, for anyone who's not um, a, um, a regular reader of the Fuji X Weekly blog, if you are, then you must have come across Anders's name because he has created, by now he's created quite a few recipes. Um, he yeah. featured again today. Um, on the blog for another recipe that was created between the two of us, uh, the two of um, them, sorry, Richie and Anders. And, yeah, and, and um, made it. I don't know. Can I, can I point? Yeah, Anders was the one who made it. <laughs> very kind to allow me to, to, to share it with everybody. Yes. And um, yeah, so so you, you worked on this recipe for um, quite some time and then you reached out to Richie. And shared yep, uh, these these details exactly. and findings um, with him. Yeah, uh, we had a bit of a ping pong match for a little uh, while. Uh, Rich had some suggestions uh, uh, that uh, were incorporated, and uh, in the end, we we were very happy, both of us. So. Uh, yep. And uh, I. Uh, uh, originally developed it for my uh, XT3, uh, and uh, uh, I had, uh, I think, th three different versions of it. Uh, because uh, when I printed Tri-X, uh, uh, I, uh, depending on, on the photo itself, uh, I had different preferences. So uh, I uh, often lower the shadow settings uh, a, a step or two sometimes um, because uh, I prefer to, to be more of a very dark gray than completely black, black sometimes. Uh, but uh, that's just uh, my personal taste. Yeah, and, and you can find those uh, if you go to the, the Fuji X Weekly website and read the article, it's, it, it does state all of those um, different modifications that you can do. Um, there's there's basically many different ways that you can use the recipe, the different changes that you can make and get slightly different looks that are still very Tri-X. They're all, they're all yeah. Tri-X uh, looks and, uh, and you can find those in there and I recommend reading them and, and you can try it just as uh, Anders um, suggests. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Should we should we have a bit of a look at um, the kind of images that uh, you chose uh, to show uh, the audience? Yeah. Uh, uh, a few words about this one. Uh, this is one of the f absolute final prototypes. Uh, this is uh, uh, Emily on the photo, by the way. She's the daughter of a friend of mine. And uh, she would very much like to be a model sometime in the future. Uh, it's so, funny. Uh, and try to help her with the uh, photos, we'll do some ses sessions now and then. But uh, anyway, uh, the only real difference here is uh, in the highlights. Uh, I think uh, it was the white balance adjustments. Uh, 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 I um, uh, often use a quite uh, technical approach when I create simulations. So um, uh, I look at, at the spectrum sensitivity charts. Uh, and uh, uh, if you look at the graph, you can find a, a peak somewhere. Uh, and that's... Uh, uh, and the, you, you get a reading for a certain frequency, uh, which corresponds to color. Uh, and uh, if you set the white balance shift to that exact color, uh, at, at least for black and white, you will get a very close match. So, so uh, what I, I was doing here, I, I had a hard time deciding uh, exactly what the white, white balance shift should be because uh, it was still a kind of an experimental approach but uh, it worked so and uh, this is a, kind of a typical example of my style 
Uh, as a, I said, uh, uh, I'm um, heavily inspired by the documentary photographers. Yeah. So um, uh, uh, I often try to uh, capture the mood of the whole scene and uh, mm -hmm. try to get uh, expressions uh, and uh, emotions. In, you in do that photo. extremely well. I absolutely love this photograph. Yeah, the, uh, the the man crossing the street in the yeah. in the background, right in the highlight, you know, it has so much contrast mm. that I mean, that's what your eye like goes to. But then that line, that shadow line brings you right to these these uh, kids in the shadow here. And it's such an interesting um, scene that you that's that's a surprise, like like uh, the, the the image is very, uh, very uh complex in that way but it's it, it but it draws you in so simply to that that man crossing the street and there's and then as you explore it you just see there's so much more yeah and uh, well uh, this is a uh, actual from a little family road trip it's mm -hmm. uh, my brother-in-law <laughs> needing with his camera there yeah, I think that was a Sony camera, but uh, he's using Fu Fujifilm now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Convinced him, converted him. That's that's fabulous. Yeah, and it's 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 so wonderful to see the different um, applications for the recipe as well. I assume that these were all then already um, taken with the finished result, with all the settings. Yeah that you had finalized. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, it's also something that I typically shoot. Uh, I'm a bit of a car nut. So um, uh, we have these uh, classic car cruising events all summer everywhere in Sweden. So uh, the, I try to go to the ones that are near me and uh, just document what's happening a lot of nice cars and people everywhere it's great fun that is so nice yeah when when you go to Anders's website you will uh, come across quite a number of uh, very interesting car <laughs> photographs they're absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful they're a feast for your eyes so please do go there and um, mm -hmm. have a look at everything else that Anders shoots. He doesn't only shoot black and white, but I think it is your preferred um, film, is it? Yeah, it is. Um, but uh, I do paid work from time, from time to time and uh, my clients don't share my preferences, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> 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 but uh, I do love black and white. Yes. Mm -hmm. so I guess it ties mainly... in. It ties in so nicely with the documentary photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of back to the roots. Yeah, because this this picture here looks like it could have been captured in you know, you know, nineteen eighty or something. It yeah. uh, it it just I love the atmosphere of it. I really do. Is that uh, it, is the uh, the smoke on the street is that from a car that just went by or uh, yeah someone did a, a burnout uh, a few minutes burnout, earlier. yeah <laughs> yeah but that that's what makes that picture you know even if you can't even though you can't see the car that atmosphere that it brings to the picture is what is what makes that special yes yeah move that's absolutely fantastic well thank you very much anders for sharing these images with us um, yes. It's an absolute treat um, and uh, to have you talk about um, your black and white is really, really beautiful. Like I mentioned just now um, on his website, there's a lot more photographs um, to look at. So you can go to um, anderslindborg.com and also um, connect with him on socials. Um, Anders, you're mostly found on Instagram, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what what I use from day to day. Uh, yes, I have so, a, a, a Facebook page as well, but uh, I'm mainly on Instagram. 
Yes, so if you want to connect with um, Anders, uh, please shoot over to his Instagram. It's anders.lindborg. Or otherwise, go to his website and um, check him out there. Um, I'm yeah, sure there are a lot of questions sure. um, in the um, audience. So um, if you do have any questions uh, for Anders or if there's anything that you want to share with him, you are more than welcome to do that now. We have a few more minutes with him before uh, we need to move on. But if there's anything from the audience, shoot away. You have the man uh, right here, right now. <laughs> or maybe, Richie, do you have a question for Anders? <laughs> Um, I, I don't have a question, but, you know, I just wanted to, 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 to chat with Anders because, you know, I've been looking forward to this for, for so long. We've been, um, you know, been scheduling this for a while and I've just been so excited to talk to Anders and we've, we've talked via email and stuff, but never, but never in person, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of what you've done and I'm so honored that I've been able to share that on my website and, but what I wanted to say was that um, these, you know, because I get people contacting me all the time about that they're using these recipes and that kind of stuff. But like legitimately professional people are doing professional work with their photo photography are using this recipe for that work. And it's, it's had an impact um, beyond, I think, what anybody in here in the audience can even imagine. Um, and so, uh, you know, in, in, I know you probably know this too, but just the, the, the influence that this is having on photography is just amazing. You know, you know, my recipes, yes, but this recipe for sure, definitely. It's a, a, a lot of fun actually to just browse through the Instagram flows. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I see this everywhere now. Mm. <laughs> especially everywhere. yeah yeah so absolutely um it's 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 really i'm i'm actually getting goosebumps because it's really um like you say richie it's it's history being made because it changes it changes digital photography it has changed it yeah. for forever it's it's really so wonderful and um you know you guys sharing all the knowledge and the community sharing in this as well and this whole journey that we're on is just so phenomenal and yeah i couldn't be more fortunate to be sitting here and um you know to also connect with the audience so there's also yep. you know a uh, question from jason uh he says do you step down on the triax well uh I suppose it's um, uh, the exposure, exposure, ex exposure compensation is talking about, and, and uh, I, I, think so. I use all kinds of settings there. <laughs> Whatever works works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and, and that's a good point: is that each picture needs to be judged individually, and uh, for some one picture going, you know, minus two thirds on exposure compensation might be what it needs and another picture going plus one might be what it needs. So the the suggestions on the exposure compensation are just a starting point, just to kind of get you yeah. maybe in the direction you need to go, but but definitely judge each exposure individually of what it needs. Exactly, yeah. and uh, a little tip with the Tri-X in particular, uh, don't try not to care too much about blown highlights because that's, mm -hmm what Triax does, it blows the highlights. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yep. kind of its thing. <laughs> yep. Yes, learn to love it. Yeah, I think we yep. are we are coming from when we're shooting with digital cameras, we are used to such a immense dynamic range, which is really not how film was and doesn't need to be. Only because there's blown how the highlights doesn't mean it's a bad photograph. The most yeah, important and, and thing is... Was... Please, Richie. Oh, go ahead, Natalie. Oh, okay. I, I was just going to say that, uh, like, um, the recipe calls for using ISO 1600 or or higher to get... And that's to get that, that beautiful um, grain 
look uh, out of it. Uh, but that can also be challenging in bright light situations. Uh, the, the like the X100V with its or X100F as well with the built-in uh, ND filter helps, you know, with that. Or if you have an ND filter, um, that can be um, useful. But I think just using fast shutter speeds, um, you can uh, use a smaller aperture. Uh, those help. But if you if you still can't get a good exposure with all that then you can lower the iso it's okay to use a lower iso if you need to and i i, yeah. I guess i just wanted to mention that for those out there who may be struggling in bright light situations using this recipe it's okay if you dial it back to iso 800 or something like that if you if you need to yeah uh, well I have a kind of a related question as well uh, mm -hmm. here uh, uh, Vanilla Wolf is uh, asking which one of the three versions I prefer, low, mid, or high contrast. And uh, uh, I very often use the mid contrast uh, because uh, uh, we have quite harsh light in, in, here in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So uh, that the high contrast version can be a bit too much often. So that's also something you can try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. what the the nice thing is is that there are so many um, options. There are so many things you can play around with and really, really work with it and check out all the different settings to find what works for you. And what's even nicer is that as you are changing these settings, you can actually see what impact it has on the photograph because you see what you get before you take the photo, and that will also help you a lot in creating you know, exactly the look that you want to get. And and just, you know, be experimental. Try out um, things, especially the, the high ISO. I also saw a conversation the other day um, online where someone, you know, was a bit worried about shooting such high ISO. And I'm just saying, well, just go for it. Shoot at a very high um, shutter speed. It's really not a problem. And you will see the differences. So you know, take a bit of time and go through the motion and make that experiment and, you know, compare the um, different ISOs if you, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to see really what difference it makes. Okay, Joel is asking. Mm. Um, <laughs> he disagrees. Uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, like it's it's interesting. That would um, <laughs> um, the uh, so film tends to, you know, and every film's different. You talk about if you talk about slide film, you're talking about having such a narrow window. If you don't nail that exposure a hundred percent, then it's going to have uh, you know blown highlights or blocked up shadows. It's, it's such a narrow dynamic range so, on a lot of slide films, and of course, every film is different. Uh, when you're talking about like uh, negative film. A lot of times there's a lot of room in the highlights. And so he's talking about, you know, overexposing by six stops and still having a usable image. And you would you would not really be able to do that with digital. But digital is kind of the, the opposite where you could underexpose by six stops and have a usable image and not really have that with your with your uh, negative film. So I think with negative film, there's a lot more latitude in the highlights. And with digital, there's a lot more tends to be a lot more room in the shadows. For dynamic range yes and then yeah. there is um the fact that you know each to their own some uh, like it blown out others don't um the cool thing mm -hmm. is we can play around with it and see and the most important thing is that you get something that you like and that you like to share and you get it quickly and easily and it looks beautiful just after you've taken it yeah, um, and uh, a little bit of that, and, well, I, I, I need to correct myself a little bit. The, the Trix doesn't actually blow out the highlights, but it, uh, when printed, it can look like they're blown out if, until you, you study it real close, because um, it's uh, bordering on uh, uh, infrared sensitivity. So uh, 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 
the last bits in the highlights, they will be so, so bright that it looks blown out when mm -hmm. printed. It's yeah, and, it's kind of an odd behavior. Yeah, and I remember when uh, I was would print my own photos, uh, you know, twenty years ago, on my own black and white photos. And you, and the way you would do it is you would use a uh, split filter. I don't know if you ever use split filter for for printing, yep. but you would you would use the the high contrast, the highest contrast filter, and the lowest contrast filter, and you would you would get it to where you would have you know the, the you have the 11 zones of the zone system right and you would make sure that in your picture there was bright white the 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 brightest white somewhere in the photo and you would also make sure you had the darkest black somewhere in the photo and you would have all 11 zones used which of course the the bright white zone is basically blown highlights you know but you yep. would incorporate that into the picture. You would have you would have both. You have in in the digital era, we try and avoid that for whatever reason. But in in the when you're printing on in the film era, printing your black and white pictures, you would actually print it that way on purpose, and that was that was very common. Yeah, I, I also remember a lot of dodging and burning and <laughs> stuff, <Yep. laughs> uh, yep. holding up screens. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yep. You have your little of... hole punched into the uh, into the cardboard. And you'd be, you know, you'd have that. Yeah. Over the. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Here, oh. here they, here they go. Here they go. <laughs> yep. Thinking of the good old days in the dark room. Um, yeah, putting. I, I, I put, remember. Putting I remember very obvious going... smiles on your faces. Yep. <laughs> yep. I remember going into the dark room one time, and I I, I went in before sunrise and I came out and it was after sunset. I think it was in the winter time. So the days were shorter, but, um, but anyways, I, I did not see daylight at all that day. And I had one picture, one print that I had uh, to show at the end of that. And so I'm very happy that Anders was able to make this film simulation recipe. So on my Fujifilm camera, I don't have to spend all day in the dark room to get the, get that look, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a lot easier. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So, um, yeah, here is all of us saying thank you so very much, Anders. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. This has been phenomenal work, and the fact uh, that it is enjoyed all around the world must uh, make you very mm -hmm. happy and proud. And oh, definitely. Um, we couldn't be happier that we were able to have you here. So thank you for taking the time to chat yeah. to us. And to be here and for everyone in the audience who's here um see it's not that scary um anders mm -hmm. also braved the world of live streaming and he came here and um it's been absolutely wonderful so mm -hmm. thank you uh, once again it's been really fabulous to have you well, yes thank uh, you so said, much for coming it, it, it's an honor so thank you <laughs> great uh, stuff uh, and also, uh, if uh, anyone has any questions about film simulations, uh, just go ahead on Instagram and send a message. Okay. Let's hope you don't regret that sometime in the future, but thank you so much for the <laughs> generous yeah. offer. So, <laughs> so send the questions his way. Um, Mr. Try X. 400 himself. Thank you so much, Anders. Once again, uh, greetings to um, Sweden. Thanks for tuning in today. And we will chat again sometime soon, I hope. Um, for yep. now, it's uh, goodbye from us here and all the best to you. Thank you. And bye. Goodbye. Thanks for being on. <laughs> bye bye for <laughs> now. Bye. How absolutely wow. wonderful! Um, that was that was great. <laughs> I can see it in your face, Richie. This was right up oh. your alley. Yep, I, I think I think we could talk, uh, you know, film and film simulation recipes and all that stuff all day long. You know? <laughs> yes, I I had that feeling. So we need yep. to, you know, do session two some other time. Mm -hmm. But for now, since we are already way above our time limit, I mm -hmm. think. 
uh, let's move on. So here's yep. over to you, everyone who's watching and everyone who's um, viewing this at any point in the future. Please uh, take a screenshot of this if you want to submit your Codec Trix 400 images with us. Please do so by submitting them to this link. So you can take a screenshot to get the QR code uh, to make uploading easier. Um, please send them to us by Wednesday, the 13th of April, so that we can show them in the next show. If you have any more questions, you are more than welcome to ask them in the comments now or later. Uh, even if you are watching this after the live stream was streamed already, don't hold back on the comments. Uh, we are um, looking at the comments and we will still be answering your questions no matter when you're watching this. So yep. we, yeah, we grow and learn and do all that beautiful stuff when you send us comments and questions. So don't hold back ever. And I think it's time now for the uh, lucky draw. It is. It is absolutely. Yay. And did you see? We've got, we've even got uh, fireworks now going off in the background. Yeah. Um, so to make it even more festive, one of. Uh, uh, the viewers who submitted uh, the images um, will be winning a 12-month subscription to the app. Everyone who submits an image gets um, automatically entered with the name into our beautiful Wheel of Fortune that also had an upgrade. And we mm -hmm. will draw that. And once your name is drawn, uh, we ask you to please make contact with that. And that is even if you already have a subscription, please um, contact us anyway, and then we will, you know, take the conversation from there. Yeah, we'll work it out. We'll figure out something. Exactly. So yep. let's do this. Let's go have a look at our beautiful wheel and all the awesome names um, that are on there. Um, we should go right ahead. Yep. Let's, let's spin who that wheel. Is the winner. And yes, let's spin that wheel. Let's find out who's winning a 12-month subscription of the super awesome app. And the winner is... It's Sebastian Quinto. Congratulations, Yay. Sebastian. Um, the 12-month subscription for the app is yours. Um, I hope that you're watching. If you're not watching, uh, we will reach out to you. You've been um, mm -hmm. submitting regularly. So it's about high time uh, that your name is chosen. We will make contact or you will make contact um, to take this conversation yep. further. So congratulations once yeah, again. Contact Natalie or me or leave a comment. Uh, go to the website, leave, send me a message, whatever. However it works for you to get in contact with either Natalie or me, please uh, go ahead and do that. Yes. Lots of ways to do that. And if you haven't been drawn yet, make sure to submit your images in the next episode and the ones coming thereafter. And you stand a chance to win a subscription as well. So congrats congratulations once again. And also Yay. thanks again for um, everyone to submit your images. The show wouldn't be anything really without you. So thank you. Mm -hmm. It's really awesome to have all your support. Yes, thank you so much for, for sending your images, letting us look at them and show them. And it's, it's wonderful. Yes, we couldn't be happier and we are fabulously excited um, that we finally kicked off season two. And it's here yeah. and we are shooting Tri-X 400 in black and mm -hmm. white and all its glory. Uh, it's yep. really nice. Oh, here's someone saying that the new HP 400 recipe is crazy good. So they obviously yeah, like it a lot. And that's awesome. And, that, and that's Anders' new recipe. So that uh, is he, the one that was, <laughs> he did it again. That is the one that was <laughs> introduced today, right? Yeah. Okay. And here we have a request for a Lomochrome purple recipe. I think we've had this request before. Oh, yeah. You know, I tried to make it, and it, it's just not possible, I don't think, right now with the tools that Fujifilm has given us. So hopefully mm -hmm. the new camera's coming out, I think, 
fairly soon, you know, maybe they'll give us some new tools and, and a Loma Chrome Purple will be possible. Let's keep hoping. Let's keep hoping. And then we have Randy who's saying the yes. XT3. Thank you for joining us, yes. Randy. It's really cool to have you with us. And absolutely, yes, the XT3 yes. definitely works with it. So, yeah, you go, go to the website, uh, find the recipe on there, and um, you'll see where it shows how to do it, or it's also in the app. Cool. Oh, Caroline has a very interesting question, I think. So she's working mm -hmm. on a photo book. Um, and would you recommend, Richie, that she uses the JPEG, JPEG straight out of camera? Yeah, absolutely. It'll, it'll <laughs> absolutely. definitely save you some time. Yes. Yeah. yeah do Most it. definitely. Uh, yeah, pictures are way, way beyond the quality that, that it would require for a photo book. So, yeah, definitely. We've just saved you tons of time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now yes. you can do two photo books. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> you can watch the previous episodes with the other save time that you've had. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, absolutely. Super stuff. That was a really nice question um, yep. to round this off and to mm -hmm. remind you again that we would really love for you to join us, that we can have a chat similar to Anders in a different way. Everyone's got a story to tell. So we would yep. love to hear yours. So don't be shy. Give us a shout out. And let's see um, that we, you know, get together and hook you up. And then you can be on our next show. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Join us. <laughs> Please do <laughs> yep. join us and um, we can have an awesome party. Don't worry. We yep. will make you comfortable. We will guide you through the process and we will make sure that you look and sound good and we will have an awesome chat on the show. Mm -hmm. And I think, yep. I think that's it. Yep. Don't, don't forget to, uh, if you missed a slideshow in, in the pre-show, of everybody's images stay tuned after the show it's up for the slideshow so you can see that yes don't go anywhere um keep watching um it mm -hmm. is a great big thank you from me to you richie thank you so much for mm -hmm. taking so much of your precious time uh to be here with us and to chat to us and well, um, i'm so honored to be here and uh so honored for all those who tuned in that they were here and everybody who participated. It's a big thank you from me. Thank you for everybody who submitted photos, for those who asked questions, for Anders for being on. Um, yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a fun time and a great show. So I hope you all enjoyed it too and got something useful out of it. Yes, um, we definitely hope so. Um, it's been absolutely wonderful to be here again and we can't wait to do it again we have our next show mm -hmm. already in two weeks time so there is uh not a lot of uh, waiting time this time around yeah. because we definitely want to stick to our normal schedule and come uh to you every two um every second thursday of the month yeah. so we are back on the 14th of april yep yeah. And yep. time to time to call it. Time to say goodbye, Richie. Yep. It's yep. been wonderful to be with you again and to chat. And so it's um, goodbye from me to you, and goodbye to the rest of the audience. It's been absolutely wonderful. It's been a good one. Yep. And you enjoy the rest of your day, however long or short it is. We will see you yep. on the fourteenth of April. Bye, everyone. Bye for now. <laughs>